Hey, um, my name is Gerard, and uh, I've been working with Joel on this ROV. Uh, the other project came about uh, by, by finding ways on how we could map the reef. We, we were thinking, um, okay, what, what's a really good way where you can actually use photographs to, to map reefs? And the reason we're really interested with photographs is because if you look at light or bathymetry, you can't really get that kind of um, accuracy that you need to, to do ecological surveys. Like, you wouldn't be able to measure actually the distribution of corals and where they are. Um, we were also interested in building an ROV because of the MATE ROV competition that we're hoping to attend. And uh, the idea is once this is fully functional, tested, and, and robust, um, uh, we, we want to do, we want to be able to just throw this thing in the water, have a very simple interface, uh, perhaps from the beach. Uh, in fact, we're looking at uh, putting a lipo in here, so a huge battery to, to make it autonomous, so there's no cables coming out of it eventually. But, uh, but perhaps uh, we won't get there until next year. But for now, we're going to use an Ethernet cable. We can use our computers to control it and, um, and just fly this thing around. I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of flying it, and, and hopefully we can get, get it, the algorithms to work well enough for it to actually do all the hard work for you, to do all the mapping, to do all the, the number collection, high accuracy too. So this would be equivalent to having a couple of divers, if not more, uh, going down, taking pictures every meter, and, um, and also measuring conductivity and temperature every second. Eventually, we want to we want to upload uh, what they know what is called as robot operating system ROS, so that it can actually do its own object detection um, and object avoidance, and maneuver you know simple trajectories. So what I'm what I'm thinking is you can take this thing as a diver, you just unleash it, uh, you make sure it doesn't crash or, or get lost, and then it should be able to just do transects in a in a grid. We got a lot of the components from SDAV to, to be able to work on this. We, we've been spending quite a bit of time on it. It's, uh, it's got eight degrees of freedom. Uh, actually, it's got six degrees of freedom, six uh, trim motors, and then we've got the two uh, DC motors for propulsion uh, to, to give the extra boost. Uh, this guy can uh, stream up to six, uh, six cameras at the same time. Uh, it's got a computer inside it, an actual computer just as powerful as a notebook which does all the image processing and it actually uh, sends commands to the motors telling them when to turn. Uh, one of the neat features we have on this is uh, the stabilization system. So we have an accelerometer in there and a compass uh, and a barometer to just, um, those are all the sensors we have in them. But, but the compass and the accelerometer we use for, for actual orientation. So it knows uh, when to orient itself. Okay, so here we only have two of the motors in the calibration um, system. So if it tilts, it tries to compensate for, for the direction that it's tilting in. This, uh, this is a 3D printer, and it's been cornerstone in, in the development of, of the ROV. We've actually designed every single part, and I could show you on my computer, uh, the actual design. And if you are to look at the design, the insides and the outsides are pretty much exactly the same, because the fact is we designed all the parts before we actually mounted them on on the ROV. And it's, it's a very, very good tool for, for development. I mean, we don't have a CNC, we don't have uh, any, any, you know, we don't have plasma cutters, we don't have all these things that, that people used to use. All we have is one 3D printer and a lot of CAD software, and, and that's, that's proving to be enough to be able to do um, development at this scale. So, so right now we're on Joel's computer here, and uh, we're looking at all the parts. Uh, like I said, this looks pretty close to what it is really in, in, in real life. And um, he actually designed this whole whole rig here, this whole mount where we have all the different components. And if you if you go inside the actual ROV, you'll 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 see this. Yeah, so uh, I, I have a website called makethisreal.com where I'm looking at um, using 3D printers for for research applications. Um, and I'm also trying to promote the, the ROV and 3D mapping. Uh, Joel, Joel Cook, he has a, a website called rustynoobs.com where he'll be also having tutorials and, and videos on how to build this kind of stuff.
listening to you guys, like seeing the software you guys use, like seeing the vision and, and the, the people, what kind of data they need. It re really gave me a good overview of, of the kind of technology that, that could be very useful in the field. Um, I, I think I've learned a lot about GIS. I don't know if I would have approached mapping as much if it weren't for SDAV. I, um, I also really don't know if I could have actually been able to, to do this without the support and, and uh, you guys' help. So...